Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. My next interview, uh, again, was from the Toronto International Film Festival, and, and what a treat to interview Carl Markovich about his new film, Nobody. This is, this is a film that, that just kind of creeps up on you and grabs you kind of by the emotional, I was going to say by the emotional throat, but it kind of does that in a way, and it, it's a beautiful film. It's stunning. The performances are remarkable. It's the kind of film that, that probably could work well on, on, on stage as well as a, a play. There's a few characters involved. There's this 91-year-old man uh, from Germany who clearly has a, a history uh, and there's this younger uh, man who is an Afghani migrant who's working um, in town, basically. I'm not going to say much more than that. And and we really, we touch on so many things. I mean, brilliant performances, cinematography is is astounding. It's a stunning, it's a stunning film. And, what, and as I said, what a treat. You might remember Carl from uh, The Counterfeiters. It won for Best Foreign Language Film Oscar a couple of years back. But we talk about guilt and, and fear and shame. We talk about uh, the lowering of, of moral uh, standards, not just in in places like Germany, but but around the world, we get into uh, our notions of, around security and national socialism. We we talk about um, right wing ideologues and, and fiction versus reality, and this idea of you know fairy tales for grown ups. and And where is truth to be found? You know, is it in the actual true story itself, which yeah, I guess is sort of follows, but is it? to be found in stories that point to greater and uh, deeper truths about the lives we live and the lives we lead and how we, you know, interact with others. And and Carl was just delightful. And again, it's one of those interviews where you just don't want it to end. And and really, uh, Carl's talented. He's he's a writer, he's a producer, he's an actor. Look him up, Carl Markovich. Uh, The film coming up uh, that we're going to be talking about is Nobody. And don't forget davidpecklive.com for more information about my writing and my speaking. And you can copy a per, uh, copy. Uh, well, you can purchase a copy. There you go. You can copy a purchase. You can purchase a copy of Real Changes Incremental online there. Uh, and if uh, you you want to get behind the work that we're doing here at Face to Face Live, you can do that by supporting us on Patreon. Sign up for the newsletter. You can advertise here. We can do shout outs. Uh, Send us a note if you're interested in going a little deeper. And uh, please, if you can't do any of those things and you're listening, please leave us a review on iTunes. We sure would appreciate it. That uh, it helps along, uh, to, goes a long way uh, on uh, in, in in this crazy digital universe that we live in. And don't forget Rabble.ca as well, where there's a whole host of other writers and thinkers and and bloggers and podcasters talking about issues that matter, uh, Canadian issues and political issues that matter globally, uh, news for the rest of us, rabble.ca. Coming right up, Nobody and Carl Markovich. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by another very special guest here today at the Toronto International Film Festival. We're, we're kind of uh, a little bit detached from the, the craziness. I'm here with Carl Markovich, who is a director, he's an actor, probably a producer too, on a certain level, I would think, and a, and a writer, uh, to talk about his new film, Nobody. Uh, Carl, thanks for taking the time today. Hello, it's a pleasure being here. Yeah, thank I, you. I'm r- thrilled to to meet you. And uh, uh, can I say that I'm a fan? Is that is that oh, okay? Yes, yes, <laughs> <laughs> you may. And we'll we'll make sure that we get a good picture later to to post on on social media <laughs> and uh, and hopefully to tell an, a, a bit of another story down down the road. This is um, uh, before we get into the film. By the way, I, I love the film, and, and congratulations on a thank you uh, on a on a fascinating uh, uh, film uh, that touches uh, so many uh, pertinent issues uh, going on today and, and through, throughout history, not only in Europe, but global, really, history, it seems to me, and a deeply touching and relational film. 
as well. It's a real uh, mix uh, for me uh, emotionally. I, 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 I actually, uh, and I want to try to make sure we create as much interest as we can for our listeners, but, but uh, I almost felt a bit unsettled that I loved your film. Is that a fair statement to make? Yes, based absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it, it's, it's not possible to really to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to express um, a simple feeling at the end of this movie, like right, uh, right. to be sad or happy or glad. You don't know really what to feel. And if this was what you have watched, uh, was, was really you were watching this movie uh, or, or was it a kind of, a, I don't know, not a nightmare, but in a way of a, a, well, of a, a weird fantasy. A weird fantasy. Thing. In a way, it's a, it's a, it's a horror film. In, in, a, in a way, way yes. Isn't it? In a way, yes. In a it's way, uh, I tried to make a truthful horror movie, not going for the horror, but for right, the right. truth. Well, and I think what's fascinating to me too is uh, that, and the horror sort. Of, and I'm not a really a horror fan. I haven't seen enough horror films to really know if I'm right about that or not. But the feeling itself, maybe that sense of <laughs> that sense of existential dread, or what it is uh, that that sort of came out to your point about not knowing exactly how to feel afterwards, yes. is kind of what I'm referring to a more of an emotional psychological yes. horror if that makes sense yes i think so. yeah, I, yeah. I think so um so, so before we dive in and we've already dived in uh, um uh, welcome to toronto oh, thank uh, you yeah and so world premiere uh and yes. tell, tell me tell me a little bit how how, how was it received the q a what what's what was the reaction you must have had some pretty visceral reactions i would think Yes, there were uh, a lot. Uh, a couple of, uh, of people uh, left uh, the screening room before it uh, before it came to the more uh, explicit uh, scenes because they they guessed it now there could be something they they didn't want to watch. They knew where it was which going. was very good and uh, and I, I, I really appreciate <laughs> and no a smart you audience who who know uh, its limits sure, or uh, sure. uh, yeah. in a way. Uh, at the end of the movie, one could feel that the people were, in a way, uh, touched both and shocked. Uh, um, many people really loved the movie, but couldn't tell why, but it expressed that they really liked it and were uh, thrilled or uh, uh, exhausted, mm. um, which I think the, the, the worst thing that could have happened is that the people say it just uh, doesn't do anything with me and I don't know why you made such an effort with things that have nothing to do with reality or humanity right. or my personal right. life of or clearly yeah. and at that point you must think that it, it went over their head or they weren't ready for it uh, I mean, as an actor, as a as, and, and you've been acting for years and directed several films and written and so on. What do you do with that when somebody, like you say, the, the uh, you you were happy that people left the theater because they know their limits. When you don't touch somebody in a particular way, have you reflected on that? I mean, obviously, you want to you want to touch as many people yes. as you can with a with a story, yes. with a with a piece of art, and 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 raise questions and so on. Mm -hmm. um, I guess there's a couple questions there, but does, does, I guess it matters to you. But but yeah, how do you process that? Maybe is the question. Uh, as an actor, both and a, a director, you always uh, ask the question: Why? How to touch people, or, or why you don't? If if it doesn't happen, for me, I found. Uh, one solution that the movies I make, I make for people who love these movies. So I always try to believe in that there are people for a spe in a special moment uh, mm. that are able to uh, to uh, reflect on this and able to uh, um, be open uh, to to our uh, sort of a, a, a bottle or uh, an environment for 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 taking for taking this. Uh, world I offer them or the story I offer, th offer them and I'm of course I'm happy when there are as many as possible 
visitors, but if there is only one, it's worth doing this right, job. Right, right, right. Which you hear artists say a lot, right? And and teachers say that a lot. People, authors, people who write books. If if I can speak to one person, and you only can speak to one. Well, al always interesting. If, if, when, while writing a screenplay or a novel, or even when you are on stage, you cannot play for a thousand or a hundred people. You 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 address it to one imaginary mm. human. Right. The human. Right. It's always about the human. You called it, you mentioned, you called it or referred to it as a sort of a fantasy uh, adventure, I think. How how real is this story for you? And, and, and we can talk, I suppose, a little bit about the story. A mm -hmm. lot of people will listen to this podcast who won't have seen the film and yes. will, will hopefully go and see it. Um, we've got a, a very complicated relationship developing between two people, essentially, is the bottom line, rooted in uh, uh, um, World War II history, uh, rooted in racism and, and uh, um, violence, yes. and, and yet deeply, as I mentioned earlier, this real paradox and contradiction of almost um, generosity. Mm -hmm. and kindness and mm -hmm. love yes. embedded within that. Yes. And so anyway, I guess I, I, you say fantasy. I kind of thought, wow, this actually could really happen. Yes. I, 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 of course, I tried to make it up like this. Yeah. For me, of course, it, it's all made up, but as close to reality as possible. Uh, um, I called my movies once uh, fairy tales for grown-ups. <laughs> right. In a way, it's... Uh, both, it, of course, it's... Uh, it's kind of like Guillermo del Toro's yeah. films, yes. uh, p p like yeah. right? That ha that yes. In, in, yeah. a, in a yes. way, yeah. I don't in, know. In a way, and I just, right. as yeah. you said that, uh, uh, fairy tales for grown-ups, that is, I thought of Pan's Labyrinth, for instance. Yeah. There's that uber sort of violence, and yet right. that but childlike sense of wonder and relationship and, and so on, Complex yeah. complexity. A and a real historical background. Right. Or w w facing... W or, uh, Real, uh, yeah, item topics for of humanity or history. So where does it come from for you? So so you act, uh, you're writing a story like this, as complicated as it is. Does it come? Did it come? Obviously, it comes from within you and the relationships that you have and what you're reading mm. and so on. Mm. Was there something that precipitated this? That that acted as a catalyst for you? Yes. That, there was okay uh, please do there tell was uh, but um before there were two uh drafts of uh ideas of uh, two different screenplays you know i i've got the draw i call it the uh the sleeping screenplay society where you have your <laughs> oh you your, have a drawer your, yeah like, i have a, like a, a file drawer. yeah yeah and Funny. there are many ideas and uh, some uh, sure. sometimes even i uh, develop dialogues already in in other uh, cases it's only uh, a log line or so sure but there were two older stories one uh dealing with there is a place in vienna where people m men but mainly from eastern southern uh, southern europe uh, gather uh, waiting for getting a job the cars right, right. Uh, holding there and wait often, them they often they new yeah. new new canadians for instance or new germans right. or new americans right. are looking for work in the fields or laborers that kind of thing yeah yes, absolutely exactly and i i once thought i want to make a story about uh, these guys but I, I i didn't found my my lead character okay. and i yep. i left it and there was another story about an old man whose dog dies uh, during the night and he lives in an allotment uh, uh, and and he wants to to bury the dog in the backyard uh, of his small cabin there which of course isn't allowed but he w wants to do it, do it secretly beca because he wants to save money uh, um, and, uh, and 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 both stories existed as ideas. In 2015, when there were millions of uh, refugees coming to Europe from Syria, from Afghanistan, and, and so on, uh, in Austria there was a big discussion as uh, how uh, we can deal with all this. And we we had once in a sudden 150,000 refugees uh, refugees in our countries running over the borders, and nobody, I, I, all, I, all the people got mad and said, "Well, we are afraid." Um, 
uh, and the Minister of Interior uh, uh, had uh, a big conference about the security situation. Yeah, fe there's so much fear and, right. and, and uncertainty and misunderstanding, really, right? Absolutely. And for me, it was so weird that they were always talking about the security situation, uh, uh, our security situation. Nobody was talking about the mm. security situation mm. of uh, people mm. who fled right. from their own right. countries because of war or hunger or both. And once in a sudden, these two ideas found together. Yeah, it's uh, fascinating. And, eh? That that kind of uh, what what is it about that creative discovery? I mean, that alone is a, is an interview. Uh, <laughs> a, a, it's, that, that's a book. Yes, right. That yes. moment of uh, I know a, 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 a philosopher by the name of Michael Polanyi. He talked about this notion of indwelling, and so mm. you uh, you as an actor, and it's a very German sort of Heidegger or. Uh, uh, Nietzsche, uh, German philosophy, existentialism, this idea that you're living the actor's life, you're living the director's life, you're indwelling those things. As you come across these stories, they they kind of come together in this moment, yes. and there's this, this moment of discovery, and that's how science works, and that's how great art works. Anyway, it's just a little mm -hmm. little aside, mm -hmm. yeah, but fascinating, right? I mean, where does that come from? How Why was it that you brought those two things together in such a unique, disturbing, compelling, and, and fascinating way. It, it really is quite remarkable. Uh, Carl, you must have thought a great deal about good and evil in yes. this film. I can't, uh, the scene of, you know, forcing the, the undressing with the handgun, the, the can of dog food, and I, again, we, we, we're not going to talk too much about it, in, in, you know, from a narrative perspective, but these are difficult things to watch. How does somebody want how do we live with that kind of tension? I mean, as as you were writing this script, is is that, are those the type of questions you want us to be asking? No, while writing, uh, I didn't thought about all of that. Mm. I thought how much I can go with this story, and uh, I wrote it uh, within seven weeks, which was quite fast for me. Wow. I uh, wow. normally I work one year and one and a half, doing a lot of research. In this case, I do, did almost no research before. Well, uh, and f for me, w what was the, the challenge uh, wh while writing it was how far I can go uh, to develop a sort of um, the same uh, uh, terrible mechanism that was in the national socialist system by uh, lowering moral standards step by step and allowing after a couple of years uh, 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 people of high culture, uh, the, the people of Goethe and uh, 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 of Beethoven and uh, philo great philosophers and artists to, to get to a, to, to a standard of, of lo lowest humanity where they were able to, 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 uh, to industrially kill uh, millions of of people i ask that myself how 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 could i transfer this mechanism by uh going step by step deeper into a thing where you once in a sudden as an audience ask yourself why how how we how, how we did we get got, here uh, get, how did we uh, get did here? we get here uh, how, how did we get here individually possible? How is it possible that a nation, and this is happening still all over the world, these types of uh, movements and mm -hmm. things, it's not just political, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it, as you say, it's, it's these uh, what would I, incremental steps, mm -hmm. small steps, mm -hmm. uh, lowering, and it, uh, it's happening politically, and, and it happens in education, and, 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 and with the church, mm -hmm. in, in so many, many different ways. Have you... Um, would you say after, you know, as I guess audiences I interact with the film and you read reviews and you hear Q&As, do you think you'll get to a better place of uh, understanding that? Or is there some, are there, th um, uh, somebody I I've read recently refers to evil as the X factor. In other words, we can't, un we just will never explain evil. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, this isn't about mad men and mad women. Yes. This is just something that lurks. Yes. Yeah, within the human condition, I believe in this. Mm. I, I don't believe that uh, people can. I, I can make people better <laughs> with with the movie, but what 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 this movie could do is to 
make people aware uh, that things like that are possible right. in a way and to when they have seen the movie maybe to see so many situations in in their life and in their society which not in this with these consequences but sure. in a way could could lead to things they're like they're that. they're or what's the word they're analogous or they're 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 comparable yes right yes. that's isn't isn't that what again isn't that what great art is about um and oh and by the way i don't think i've congratulated you yet but it's i i, I can't remember now if i've worked we're almost 20 minutes in but congratulations on the film again it's uh, as i was just thinking of great art the layers to your film uh, they're astounding. I think this is the kind of film that, that, that people will write essays about uh, one day because it does, especially in a philosophy class, in, in, a, in, a, in an anthropology uh, class, social science and so on, because of the layers and the complexity. It's never uh, or rarely uh, simple black and white, right and wrong. These are, as you say, once again, it's, it's a step downwards into that, that spiral. Yeah out of control spiral and you you touch on that in uh, this this by the way and the acting the, the two performances are astounding a deep and the they uh, are. 90, 91 year old uh, actor uh, is that no he his age his real age is 78 okay, okay. in the movie in the he movie. is 91 that's right that's right uh, so that one can believe that he was right, around 17 18 uh, uh, when he was working in right, the right. concentration camp sure wow. sure sure it's, and, we, you know, you brought it up. I wasn't going to, but within minutes of seeing the film, I, I thought that's where we were going. Really? I, I really? did. So, so you were really I, I fast with this. I, I don't know why. Guessing. It's. Oh. I mean, it's a testament to your writing and your mm -hmm. directing, I think, and the mood that you created. Yeah, I tried uh, to. And, and, and also the acting of, of yeah. this man. And yeah. there were just these little inklings. The, um, anyway, yeah. um, uh, to, to, because you mentioned it, that you you thought so early uh, while watching it. Of course, we had uh, the possibility that it, um, the setting, this allotment uh, there, it is there. We didn't make up anything there, and even the entrance, which may re remind us of other uh, get, concentration get, getting camp. Of, getting goosebumps. Uh, yeah. I'm getting goosebumps. Uh, yeah. It's but astounding. It is there. So and all the gates, the close uh, to 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 open and close all this. And what does the German uh, is it garden community? I, I try Schrebergarten. Yeah, yeah. There was a guy called Schreber uh, who invented it in I don't know mid nineteenth century or Isn't beginning that of interesting. Nineteen. Fascinating spot. Yeah. How did it, you how did you come it, across that location? Was that a total fluke or uh, in Vienna? It, it, it's one of the biggest oh, okay. allotment uh, uh, complexes. It's like a gated. A gated garden community. Yes, right. And it's one of the biggest in Europe. It, it was a, a former uh, um, parade uh, yard for for a military uh, uh, oh, okay. in the in the monarchy. And later on, uh, uh, be, uh, between the wars, when the Socialist Party uh, ruled Vienna, they they made the small gardens for for a simple people the, to, to live there and and grow their own vegetables and things like that the the, the ironies abound to me of of the space you know that this 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 gated garden community built to keep people out basically yes, yes. <laughs> and to keep some people in of right, course right and i understand security and so on and but but hey in that vein tell tell us a little bit about adib and and and, and the title of the film and the tattoo and and where that comes from, um, no, nobody. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't. Now, of course, I, I think, wow, how come I didn't see that before? <laughs> but once again, for me, a great piece of art or a great work reveals itself after a viewing and, yeah. and sits with you. And yes. So, so when I see it again, uh, uh, I'm sure there will be other uh, things that will pop out. But yeah, tell us about the, the name and, and, and his name. And that, that scene near the end of the film when, when Adib says, do you want to know my name? Well, I already know, I already know your name. Yeah. It's just, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> um, I always was fascinated by uh, the Ulysses story mm. because it's uh, one of the earliest uh, 
storytelling uh, we have the c in, 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 in the world order, not in the world, in Europe at least, it's our tradition. Sure. And uh, the story about Ulysses has so many references to, 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 to our life, I of identity, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, already as a child I was fascinating, especially by the story with uh, Ulysses and uh, Polypheme, the, the, is it Cyclop? In, in English, the word, yeah, but, yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, uh, where where uh, where he he hides his name with his nickname. I uh, and and uh, Ulysses was called as a smart guy, and and uh, and and he was always called uh, uh, his his nickname was Odys, and Odys is sounds like the Greek the Greek word written is O U. T I S Utis and Otis, it sounds almost uh, like the same, but Utis means nobody. So his nickname was nobody, the, uh, uh, Ulysses' nickname. And he used it uh, to escape the, the Cyclop uh, 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 there as in, in, in a way of escaping there. And for me, once in the sun while writing, I thought I, I, I have to use this in a way. And it happened almost easily that I found, you know, it has, has to be a tattoo, of course, the reference to mm -hmm. concentration camp, to remember you in a way that it it, come, it falls into the eyes of this old guy uh, in a way of there is something with him. I, I, it reminds me of... And all of a sudden it makes sense guilt. in a way, right? Yes, yes. And, uh, and that it comes out that he, he tells him of his past uh, in a way that he met in the concentration camp uh, a former professor of literature who 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 knew uh, uh, the odyssey That's right. uh, by heart and and he still he he forgot his name and his face but he still but remembers he, the the beginning of the the, the story odyssey, the, the story, story stuck yes. with him and he's so fascinating while telling it and uh, that uh, he he tells it a comrade once in a sudden this yes. this guy is both he's a comrade yes. he's a victim he's the only victim he could save yeah. he wants to to uh well in some way too in a way uh, re uh, re re redemption re well i was going to ask you about redemption too but but in some way he's the enemy as well yes isn't he absolutely i mean hence the gated he's, community yes. the locks and the keys yes. and he's both which is yeah. schizophrenic all the time of for, for this old man it's it's always a, a a schizophrenic situation. Yeah, is that and is that is that the? Do you think, uh, as as the storyteller, the writer, the director, is that the guilt? Is that the shame? Uh, is that his sense of conviction uh, that we all deal with? Uh, you know, as we talk about uh, moral problems and moral issues, is that uh, eventually is that the redemptive moment uh, for for his character? Does does that make sense? Yes. It makes it's it's not the redemption itself, but it's all the questions you 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 just w were asking. He asks himself. He's, he's asking. How in, could in I, the moment? What if I would have acted as a hero, or what is a hero, or right, what is right. acting as right. a good person? Right. How does it feel when you do the right thing, thing. or mm. uh, a moral correct uh, deed or life? And as both in a schizophrenic way, both doesn't fit together because there it's an ancient guilt or a guilt from the past cannot be redeemed, mm. is it redeemed? Yeah, in, redeemed in, in yeah. the present. Sure. With 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 uh, with a present problem that had nothing really to do with together, but they they just meet in this weird moment because mm -hmm. there is a mm -hmm. very old man and a very young guy one one man at the end of his life and one one man hoping to make his life sure for the starting first time. starting fresh yeah. starting new uh, a new a new german a new a new yeah. in, uh, immigrant to yes. the country right trying Absolutely, to trying yeah. to start out uh, yeah. start what what's interesting is some of those um issues that you bring up about the for me anyway the racism and the issues around refugees and and 
and, and the state that Europe is in and, and, and Canada's position on taking in refugees. It's definitely a theme, I think, uh, at, the fil at the festival this year. I've, I've noticed it in, in, mm -hmm. in quite a few of the films I've seen. Um, it, it's, it's bubbling to the surface in a variety of different ways. And you wonder to what degree some of those same hmm, bits of racism and ideology are still so, so present. Yes. Even even today, and yeah, you yeah, think, yeah. "Oh, wow, we've come so far, and aren't we wonderful? And we're on the other yes. side, right?" Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, every day when you watch the news, especially in in, in Europe, uh, uh, it's not the situation not only in Austria, but we are surrounded in the meantime by populist uh, uh, right wing mm. uh, governments mm -hmm. and ideologies. And raising anti-Semitism and uh, uh, and and po politicians who deal with uh, the fear and the narrow-mindedness of, uh, uh, of 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 people. Well, all of a sudden, the phrase "never again," right? Uh, not all of a sudden, but doesn't really mean a whole lot when we look back at the 20th century and even what's yeah. happened since yes. since uh, World War II and Nazi Germany. Yeah. I mean, how many times has it happened again? Rwanda and Bosnia and and uh, Cambodia mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. And we wonder is, uh, at what point do we ever learn? And why, why are, Carl, here's, and sadly, we're gonna have to wrap it up in a couple of minutes here. Uh, and I wish we could, I'm hoping maybe we can do a part two. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah, I, um, I mean, are there answers? You know, I mean, I know it's such a it's a it's a it's a crazy question, really. I mean, your film raises so many important mm. issues and questions and and are things getting better? You know, are, are we, is the pendulum kind of swinging, if you will, uh, in, in a political sense, in a relational sense? I've, I mean, one of my themes, Carl, for years, and I love your film for this, is that there is similarity through difference, and yet we seem to, to, to bend the other way. We're, we're afraid of the difference, and that's so present. Yes. Uh, Adib, Adib is the mature one in this film. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, the yeah. young immigrant who everyone is afraid of. Yeah especially uh, in this case, is the one who has the wisdom and the maturity to say, no, I'm willing to get to know this guy. It's partially a practical thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, anyway, I'm kind of rambling now, and I know my listeners are going, okay, shut up, Peck, let Carl talk. <laughs> of course, I have no answer. No. Uh, I, what, 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 what I would say, I would say, 10 years ago, I would have said, yes, things get better and better. Mm. And we, uh, especially in the Western world or in, in Europe, with European nation, all the troubles, though, but coming together and trying to solve problems in a civilized, uh, in a civilized way, I would have said, as an optimist, I, as I am still am, uh, it, it, we, we can get out of this. We right, can, right, we can. Right. But now, I wouldn't have thought that I come. Uh, I, 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 I will. I will live again uh, in a sort of climate, uh, right. like uh, as my parents told me mm. before I was born. Sure. So immediately after the war, and of course during the yes, war. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, because I was raised in the uh, late 60s and, and 70s where economy, everything goes, went, went up, up, up. And uh, jobs and, uh, and future and these were all... Uh, hope. There was a hope, sense of hope, hope I suppose, and right? And freedom Come. and everything. Yeah. Uh, Twen and 25. Uh, feminism and everything. Uh, and, uh, and once in a sudden we are in a situation where we think, ah, people are, obviously we are not not really ready for it we, mm. we are too we freedom scares us yeah I, in a I way think you're right which is terrible because it's the only way to to really to get rid of this terrible shit we always create we do seem to be pretty good at creating that don't we yeah yes yes in this way we are uh, Great artists. Freedom, free, freedom scares us. It's uh, quite a somber way to, to, to kind of wrap up our interview. Uh, but can you t can you talk a little bit about uh, nobody and, and uh, is it are you hoping to do a festival tour? Is that sort of what's next? Uh, you, you, yes. Uh, ger German distribution. Uh, where will people be able to see this film? Um, uh, we we will have uh, our our. Uh, 
premiere, our national premiere end of September in Vienna, nice. which is the opening of the cinema release. I'd be in, happy to come for that, by the way. Oh, if yeah. you If you want me to host the Q&A <laughs> yes. afterwards, I'd be happy to come. Great, yes. thanks I'll talk, for that. I'll we, talk we to your talk publicist. To, to yeah. the, yes, <laughs> please do. Uh, and which I, I'm looking forward to, of course, mm. because this will be the big premiere right. with all the cast and the team in it's Vienna fantastic. and then the, so the uh, uh, cinema tour in Austria. Of course, I hope that we get the chance to, to, to go to different other festivals because it's not so easy for a movie like this uh, to, to get attention. Right. Uh, but I'm quite f confident. And Toronto was one of the best possibilities to, to so get good. attention. I'm so and glad. So glad that you that that, that they too. they accepted into the festival. Yes. So glad that I got to to see the film. And Thanks, Dorota Lech. I have to say, okay, which yeah. uh, chose us for nice, the contemporary nice. world cinema nice. section. So good. Yeah. And I'm I'm thrilled to have met you. And thank you thank you for the for the film and the and the conversation. And again, astounding performances. I mean, it's a testament to your your ability to create a moment and to write the moment and to to provide a space for the actors yes. to feel thanks, free uh, enough. Thanks uh, for, for mentioning this. I oh, have oh. to uh, to say uh, the actors, uh, at least nobody knows them in Canada, but it's Heinz Trixner, the old man, and uh, Bohan Nulin uh, uh, Hassan Sadeh uh, plays the Afghani uh, refugee. Beautiful, uh, beautiful performances. And they are unbelievable. T yes. Touching, compelling. I, I would uh, think people people will be hearing about them. Uh, for sure. We've been talking with Karl Marshall uh, with, uh, about his new film, Nobody Here uh, at the Toronto International Film Festival. Karl, thanks so much for your time.